Hello everyone, welcome to Jehu Crochet. In today's tutorial I will show you how to make this beautiful cape. It can be worn as a long cardigan, as a nice cape with a scarf in the front. There are many many possibilities on how you can style this as you can see in the pictures. So let's move on and I'll show you everything you need to know in order to make this beautiful cape. For this project I am using Cookie. It is a yarn that is available to purchase on the Hobby website and I will put a link in the description box below this video to where you can get this yarn. This is 100% acrylic and it is classified as a bulky weight. There are 200 grams and 600 meters per cake and I'm going to be using three of these cakes for my project. So depending on the size that you're going to make, that will determine how much of your yarn you're going to need. But I will say between 400 and 600 grams of your favorite um, bulky weight yarn. So this is the yarn that I am using. And you're also going to need a six millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a clover hook, but you can of course use any one of your favorite hooks. And you're also going to need a darning needles in order to sew in your ends and sewing the pieces of our cape together. So get your materials in order and let's begin. We begin by making a chain and your chain needs to be a multiple of three plus one and it also needs to be long enough to reach from the tip of one shoulder all the way to the tip of the other shoulder with a little bit of ease on each side. It means a little bit longer than the tip of your shoulder on one side until a little bit longer than the tip of your shoulder on the other side. And as I've said it also needs to be a multiple of three plus one. So I chained 70. I chained 69 and then plus one. But you can of course chain whatever length you need to fit your size, the size that you want to make. To begin we're going to put one double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and of course as always the chain that is on our hook does not count so we count one, two, three, four chains and into the fourth chain we do a double crochet. Now we will skip two chains and into the next chain we're going to work two double crochet, chain two, one single crochet all into the same space. So one double crochet, a second double crochet into the same space, chain two, and one single crochet into that same space. Like that. Now we're going to skip two stitches again, skip two, and into the third one do the same. Two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet. And we're going to continue doing this all the way along until we have only three chains left from our beginning chain. So continue doing this, skip two and into the third, two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet and so on until you reach the last three stitches of your row and I will meet you here to see how we finish the first row. I'm at the end of the row and I have three chains left, one, two, three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip these two chains and into the last chain I'm going to work two double crochets. And that is going to end our row number one. And this is what our first row looks like so far. So you can see those stitches we did two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet in each chain and then we skip two chains in between and that's what it looks like so far. 
To continue to the next row, we're going to chain 3, and that chain 3 will count as our first double crochet of the round, and we're going to turn. We're going to work another double crochet back into that same stitch that we just chained out of. And now we're going to work only into those chain 2 spaces that we have. So in the previous row we did two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet. And in those chain two spaces of each one of the repetitions that we made last round, that's what we're going to work now. So we started with the two double crochets and we're going to always have the two double crochets in the beginning and the end of each row. And the repetition from now on is very simple. We're simply going to work two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet into each of those chain two spaces from the previous round. So find your first chain two space, mine is here, and work two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet all into that chain two space. One double crochet, two double crochet, chain two, and one single crochet. And we move to the next chain 2 space and do the same. Two double crochets, chain 2, and one single crochet. One more time, find the next chain 2 space, work two double crochet into that space, chain two, one single crochet. And we're going to continue doing this for the entire row and you can see the pattern already forming up. So continue working like this until the end of the row, until you reach your very last repetition and I will meet you here to see how we finish the row. So I made it to the end of the row and I made my very last repetition and here I have my first repetition from the first uh, row and the two double crochets in the beginning of the row. And what we're going to do is we're going to skip all these stitches and into the very last stitch of the row which is actually the chain three from the first row we're going to work two double crochets into the top of that one. So this is actually how we maintain having two double crochets at the beginning and end of each row. At the end of row two, this is what our work should look like. And from now on, the repetition is very easy. In the beginning of the row, we chain three and turn. That counts as our first double crochet. And we work another double crochet back into that same stitch. And then we work our repetition, two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet into each of the chain two spaces along the row. And when we get to the end of the row, we put two double crochets in the last double crochet, just as we just did. And this is the repetition for the remaining of the work. We continue doing this until our piece is long enough. And when I say long enough, I mean you hold it to your shoulders and the length is the length that you want your cape to be. So if you want your cape to go all the way down to your knees or you want it to be longer or shorter, that's how you measure. You hold the piece to your shoulders and you see how long it goes. And you continue working this repetition until you have the length that you want. And when your piece is the length that you want the cape to be, then come back to the video and I will show you how to continue. Once we have our piece done and the length that we want it to be then our back piece for our cape is done and you can go ahead and fasten off and cut your yarn but leave a long tail so that we can later use it to sew pieces together. Now it's time to make the two front parts of our cape. Now both of them will be the same, they will be worked the same way and we will make them the same width and length. 
um, I'm just going to explain to you how you determine how many chains to chain to begin the both sides of the front. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the length of the chain that you used to start your back part. So for me to start my back part, as I have said in the beginning of this video, I chained 70. So I'm going to take that number and you take the number that you chained to start your work with and you divide that in half. And then you need to look for the number that is the closest to that number, which is a multiple of three. So for me, as I've said, I started with 70 chains. If I divide that by two, that's 35. And the number that is a multiple of three, that is the closest to 35 is 36. And of course, just as we did with our beginning chain, we need a multiple of three plus one. So I'm going to chain 37 for each one of my front parts. And you calculate yours the same way. You take the length of the beginning chain that you used for your back part, you divide it in half, and then you choose the number that is a multiple of three that's the closest to that number that you got. And you add one to your starting chain. Then we will work both parts of the front the same way with the same stitch. So to begin, you already know what to do once you have your starting chain. You do a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook and continue from there with the stitch pattern that we did for the back part. So you work it exactly the same way, only you're making both of the front parts a little narrower than we did the back part. Then you also have to make sure that you make both of your front parts the same length as you did your back part. So you work them the same amount of rows that we worked for this part. Now once you have both of your front parts made, meaning you made one of them and you got it to the length that you want and you can fasten it that one off and make the second one exactly the same way. And once you have both of them, then come back to the video and I will show you how to sew the pieces together and continue to make our hood and to finish up the cape. Once we have all of our three pieces done, it is time to sew them together and we are sewing them together at the straight edge. So the straight edge would be the edge where your starting chain was and not where you fastened off. Because of the way our stitch is, the other edge will have a zigzag to it and we want that at the bottom. So you'll need to have all your three pieces together with the straight edge on top and lay them all flat on a table or a surface in front of you so you can place them on one on top of the other in order to sew them together. And the way we sew them together is we have our back piece, that's the big piece, and then the two small pieces which are the front. And my work is it looks the same way back and front because I didn't join any new balls of yarn in the middle but if you did and you have a favorite side of your work which you want to face outwards when you wear this then you should make sure you sew them together the right way so that the wrong side is inside. We're going to place both of our front panels on top of our back panel like this and match the corners. Once you have your two front panels on top of your back panel and the corners match, you can use stitch markers to hold them together. And we are going to sew the top, but we are not sewing them all the way. So we are sewing from the corner until about halfway through each one of the panels. And the other half of the panel will remain unsewn. So sew your pieces together from the corner until about halfway through the front panels on each side and leave the other half unworked. And when you did this, then come back to the video and I'll show you how to add the hood. I have my pieces together. They are all sewn on the shoulder side. And now we are going to add the hood. And to add the hood, we are going to attach our yarn here at the corner of the front panel the one that isn't sewn and we are going to work all along this line until we get to the other corner 
and we're going to use the same pattern that we used for the body of our um, cape and uh, because we sewn the pieces together with our starting chains up then we already have the chains to follow so we already know exactly where we have to skip to and work into the next one it's just the other side of the stitches that we already have so I'm going to attach my yarn here and I'm going to work the beginning of the first row with you to make it clearer and then you continue by yourself until you have your hood done so I have my yarn attached at the corner and just as we did before to begin a new row I'm going to chain three and I'm going to put a double crochet back into the same stitch and now I have to skip two chains so there's already this hole here and those are the two chains that we skipped when we worked this piece and into this space here I'm going to work my two double crochet chain to one single crochet So as you can see, we're just working our stitches into the same place that we worked our stitches here. It's actually creating sort of a mirror image. So once again, to skip two, I'm skipping these two chains here. And I'm going to work two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet into this stitch here. just like that this is what it looks like and we're going to continue working like that all the way around until we get to the other front corner and then we're going to turn and chain three and work the way back so essentially what we're making is another piece and this piece will be a rectangle and it's going to be from one corner of the front to the next corner of the front and that rectangle needs to be long enough to go over your head and once you have that rectangle big enough so that it goes over your head then come back to the video and I will show you how to attach the top to create an actual hood and then we will do finishing touches on our piece this is what my piece looks like after I finished the hood so here is the front and back this is the place where we started our hood and this is the part that will eventually be the hood now all we have to do is sew the hood together and the way we do it is we sew both ends to each other and then along this line and then we will close our hood like this so the way i suggest doing it is by lining up both sides of your hood and then use stitch markers to hold it in place and then sew the hood together and you can use whatever method you want if the method that you are using um, should be on the inside of your work and it is a seam that shouldn't be seen then you might want to flip your hood inside out and sew it like this and then later on you will flip it back so depending on what method of sewing you're using um, you can use whatever method you want but this will determine how you will hold your work while you sew it together and we start by sewing together both ends one to the other and then along this line so that our hood is the same size on both sides so the folding should be in the middle of this rectangle that we just created once you have your hood sewn together then your piece is pretty much done and all we have left is to do a nice trim around the whole piece so before you go and finish your hood I will already show you what I do to uh, finish the piece up 
So once my hood is all sewn together, I choose one of the corners at the bottom and it doesn't matter if it's a front or back panel corner but one of the corners so that once I'm finished with the trim I can hide my tails and it won't be that visible. So just choose one corner at the bottom of your work no matter what panel and attach your yarn and then go around and work single crochets all around your work. Now you want to have the right side of your work facing you when you do it so that the single crochets are all aligned nicely and facing the right side out. Now because there are no seams at the side of our work then it will just be going all the way around. So when you finish the panel you turn the corner and then you go up this side and then you go right here is where we joined for um, the shoulders but you just continue working and then you're already at the back panel and so on until you go all the way around your work and back to the corner where you started. If you want you can do two rows of single crochet, you can even do a half double crochet border. It's your choice, it's a design choice and I leave that up to you. But it will just be nice to put some kind of border so that all the edges of your work are nicely finished and cohesive. So I leave you with that and once you've done both of these things, sewing the hood and making a nice border all around your work, then um, it's pretty much done. And I am very much looking forward to see what you come up with. I always love seeing um, creations done using my tutorials. So I invite you all to join the Facebook group and post your pictures there. You can also post them on Instagram and tag me. All the details are in the description box below this video. If you like this video, if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your friends. And if you're not yet subscribed to Jehu Crochet, then please subscribe for many more tutorials, product reviews, yarn reviews, and just anything crochet related. Thank you all very, very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.